evening, factionistas, and welcome back to the 31 Days of Halloween. Today's look is a mummy, and if you're not subscribed already, definitely subscribe, because I'm doing like 28 more of these or something, I don't know. Math ain't so good, I ain't so good at the math. I'm taking this LA Girl Pro Primer, which is supposed to be an eyeshadow primer, but I'm using it as a white pencil just to etch out where I want my mummy face to go. Since I know that I'm going to be wrapping my face in medical bandages, I don't need to paint my entire face, so I'm just kind of using this as a reference guide. So I'm taking this green and gray face paint, which are water-activated face paints by Mehran, and mixing them together to color like that. And I'm going to apply it all over my entire face. Nothing too crazy here. Just a little bit of your everyday full coverage foundation. Except it's a little bit mummy colored. Once you have that on, I'm tapping out a little bit in certain areas just to get a little bit more coverage where I want to keep that skin away. So now I'm taking this Morphe Cream White, and I'm using this to use as a highlight on my cheekbones. This is a trick learned from my pal Jordan Hans, and it's that cream-based or grease paints blend over face paint, water-activated face paint, beautifully. Oh, sorry, my phone. Every time. But they, they blend over beautifully, and, they're, and it's fantastic. So basically, grease paint is what you get from the Halloween store. I've seen so many people... They see my tutorials and they go to buy face paint and they go to the Halloween store and get grease paint. They're totally different. Grease paint needs to be set with a powder, just keep that in mind. But I'm using that same grease paint now again on the other side and that's just going to give you a nice elevated cheekbone since we're a mummy, we're kind of dead. But like I said, grease paint needs to be set because it's a cream and it will slip around the face. So I'm using a white eyeshadow to set on top of that and that's going to keep it moving and keep it stay or not keep it moving, keep it staying all day. So now I'm using this Too Faced bronzer, which is a chocolate soleil bronzer. It's a little bit too green, a little bit too Frankenstein for me. So I'm using this bronzer everywhere except the highlight places to kind of bring it down to more of the green showing underneath this brown tone. It's also going to start breaking up the color because we don't want this to be too clean because it's a mummy and he's been dead for, you know, I don't know, 65 million years. No, that's like a dinosaur. Like 3,000 years? I don't know. So anyway, we're taking this brown toned eyeshadow by Anastasia, which if you want the specific color, it'll be linked down below. And I'm using that with a blending brush, and I'm etching out where I want my cheekbones to be. So just get with a nice straight line. Don't worry about blending. Don't worry about it being soft. Just apply it right to the cheekbone. And then once you have that, dust off the excess color on either the back of your hand or a tissue, and then start fading it upwards up the cheekbone using a nice circular motions to get that real smooth. And then keep adding more and more color. Don't go in too dark. Don't go in with the black right away. Keep adding more and more color to really build up that cylinder fake cheekbone. And then the same technique around the temples, and that's going to connect to the cheekbone in a C shape, and that's really going to make those succulent cheeks really pop out real good like, you know, you feeling me? So we're doing that same technique also underneath the brow bone and just anywhere that needs depth. I like to do this before every face paint or special effects tutorial because I like to see that depth and that movement in my face so I know exactly where to place everything else. And here we're following the same technique that we did on the cheekbone. I'm just adding a little bit of black eyeshadow and curving that in a backward C shape over the brow. And I'm just going to like not spend too much time on diffusing the line because we're going to diffuse it with the white cream by Morphe. So I'm taking that same white cream here, and I'm applying it where I want it to be the lightest, which is right at that brow line, and I'm tapping it out to fade it away. And then you can also bring that white inward to make that black line thinner than how you applied it, and that's how you, that's kind of like a little bit of a trick that can only really be done with high pigmented products, but that's how I got that in there. Um, so my camera didn't record because I'm stupid, but I just wanted to get rid of my nose, so I, I etched out a little bit of a line to make my fake nose because I'm going to put the bandages over my nose but I want a little bit of it to stick out so it looks like I don't have a nose at all. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just edged out that and I'm using a, a black water activated face paint to color all of that in. Now moving ahead, we're going to do the same technique around the eyes. And there's nothing really too interesting or different that hasn't already been taught on this channel. But we're going to just going to etch out a little bit of a skull shape. And I'm using a face paint. Usually I would use a liner because the face paint gets it really bumpy like this. And it's not a very smooth transition onto the skin. So if you guys have a black eyeshadow or a black, like a gel liner, that will definitely smooth out better on top of this face paint. So definitely learn where I have failed. But then just fill it in. You might have noticed now that I highlighted around the eye area. I didn't show you guys that because it doesn't have any purpose in this tutorial because I totally messed it up and it ended up being the best thing that could ever happen. But I'm going with the pro, the white pencil again to create that little air my mouth area where I'm going to put the teeth and stuff. Take a little wine sippy and then keep moving. So this is something that you guys have definitely seen on my tutorial before, but we're just adding some teeth and I'm using a brush that is a similar shape on how I want the teeth to be. And I'm using the flat end to create the base of the tooth and then turning it sideways 
and to create the sharp part of the tooth again this also this all this detail work is not really going to be in much of the video because i ended up getting a little crazy and i went super super grunge which i ended up loving it at the end but at this point i hate it in the tutorial but that just is a little bit of a life lesson that you should just keep going and don't give up because it'll probably work out but now we're filling in the gums with the red and you might be able to tell that i'm not putting it on very perfectly because i am hella frustrated because <laughs> i'm like oh my god this makeup looks sucks i hate it blah 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 but anyway so life lesson just keep going but we're gonna do we're just filling it in with some red face paint to get it real nice and gummy after that i'm going with a little bit of black eyeshadow i would still suggest doing this because some of the teeth still do show in the final makeup look so you want a little bit of definition i wouldn't worry about too much of the cheekbones here but definitely in between each individual tooth to separate them and to make them look more fantastical and not just big white lines but definitely use that black eyeshadow to separate these teeth and make them real nice and grungy and fade them out and you know all that good stuff this is where everything got messed up and that ended up being perfect i put my sclera contact in and i cried up all my makeup so we're just going to correct that and go with it so i'm using a little bit of black face paint on a stippling brush which adds a lot of cool texture and with very 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 small amount of face paint on it i'm going in putting it on my under eye i'm tapping it out i'm making it very grungy very distressed you want it to look like you really just crawled out of a grave which so this is actually a great makeup look for beginners because cleanliness is not important you can be very sporadic it can be very dirty very you know there's no precision involved in this so now i'm going to mimic that on the other side of my eye and i'm using a makeup wipe to take the black eyeliner off my waterline and to really diffuse that bottom part of the eye socket that's missing and we're going to do a similar technique to the right eye onto this now left eye if that makes sense to you so again just taking it off making it grungy going back in with that stippling brush with a little bit of black face paint i'm just adding a little bit of distress and dirt and like grunge i don't know grunge is the perfect word i could use grunge for a lot of stuff but i'm really just erratically going around and breaking up that color breaking up some of those clean lines and breaking up some of that perfect blending that we had done you know what i'm saying so we're just gonna go and do all that stuff now i'm shading a little bit precisely around the nose i want that nose bone to kind of pop out because i know that the top of my nose I'm going to have show through the bandages. At least that's my plan at this point because I've never wrapped a mummy before. So I was like hoping it all went okay. But we're just um, shading around that. So now you can see that it pops out a little bit. And this is the best brush ever. I will link it down below. I'm pretty sure it's from Morphe, I think. But it's a tiny little fan brush. And it's perfect for these little scratches and these little texture marks. And that's what I'm doing to diffuse those straight lines around my eye and other various places around my face. We're going to be doing the same thing now with highlight instead. So same brush, I just cleaned it off, and I'm going in with a white face paint now. And I'm just going to highlight to break up some of that dark color and just to add more sc scratchy, diffused texture. And I really just want to make it, like, super grungy. I'm using a little bit to shade out and stand out some of the teeth, but I'm really just going in and breaking up some of that color and using my finger to pat it out just so I look real dirty. And then the same thing on the other eye. I was realizing it was a very dark looking on this side, so I'm kind of breaking up some of that black and i'm putting in some white snazzy stuff at this point i don't really know what i'm doing anymore i'm just kind of like making sure that it all works out in the end but now i'm using it actually strategically to add a little bit more white on that cheekbone that we had done before <laughs> i still think you should definitely do the cheekbone you can still see it through a little bit on the end result of this makeup so it's definitely worth something but i uh, definitely just stick to the teeth the skin color and the cheekbones but now going in with more black face paint, I wanted to black out the right side of my teeth. That way, like, when I wrapped it, you can only kind of see the left side of the teeth. I wasn't really sure how the wrapping was going to go, which we're about to do now. So I'll just show you sped up how I wrapped this mummy. Basically, I started and I focused on getting all of my hair and my ears in first. I used two gauze bandages, which I got at my local Walgreens. And it was, I think, like $10 for a package of five. So I only used two of them. And then I used a brown uh, face paint to distress it and make it a little bit more mummy colored. But just make sure that you're wrapping it flat because only one side of these bandages are painted. So once I have my head wrapped up, now I'm kind of going and I'm going to start covering my face a little bit and definitely color uh, cover the skin that I didn't paint. But I'm on FaceTime with Jordan and Hans right now and we're like trying to figure out like what the hell I'm doing because I don't know. Like first look like a turban, then I look like I have a toothache. So it was like a very interesting to wrap this like a mummy but you, as you can see i'm kind of just going with it and then you have to just all you have to do is tuck the ends into the wrapped part and it'll definitely stay put because it's i'm very very tightly wrapped in this bee but this is kind of the end result that you're seeing here and i got it just a little bit over the nose i showed a little bit of teeth i was feeling it 
So hopefully you look something like this. Mm -hmm. With this black and brown eyeshadow on a stippling brush, I'm going to start distressing out these bandages while they're on my face. I didn't want to do this too much with the bandages not on my face because I wasn't really sure where it was all going to go. But this is my favorite part of makeup. All these like finishing touches that are all like fun. And you're like, yeah, it's working out like I did good. So it's like, that's what I'm doing now. So I'm just using these eyeshadows to darken up and distress all over these bandages. This is, of course, all personal preference. You can do a mummy where the bandages are stark white. You can do a mummy where the bandages are, like, almost black. You can soak the bandages in tea if you have a little bit of time. Make a big pot of tea and just leave the bandages in for, you know, like an hour or so and then take them out, let them dry, and then be stained, like, the color of tea, which is a great way to really do these bandages. But now I'm just going in with a smaller brush, and I'm going to precisely, like, where there's, like, a curve or a divot, I'm going to place that shadow in there. And I'm also going to place underneath, a, like, this bandage. So... Where there's a bandage on top of, I'm shading the bandage beneath it to add some depth and to really make get some nice movement on there. And for the shadow and the darkness and that grunge feel to really translate onto the bandage as it is in the makeup. So it's a little bit more cohesive and it flows real sassily. But that's really all that it is for this tutorial. And I hope you guys like it. And it was, this one was definitely a tough one to film, but I banged it out for you. And my phone again. But I love you guys so much. And definitely subscribe so you can stay up to date with more of the 31 days of Halloween and you guys are the bestest ever. All the product details and everything will be listed down below and I'll see you guys on the internet. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. All of those are at Alex Faction and I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Bye friends.